Hi guys, Kim here. Welcome to Backyard Blooms. In today's video, I'm going to talk about a plant that I just purchased from Lowe's. This is a Rose of Sharon, and the name is Sugar Tip. And there's a plant tag for you right there. So Sugar Tip has a gorgeous double pink bloom that you see there, and a variegated leaf. So that's a win-win for me with two different characteristics to it. I love it. This plant is going to be more upright than it will be wide. This plant will get five to six feet tall and only three to four feet wide. It will take full sun and this plant does not seed. So some people are really scared of Rose of Sharon, but this one will not set seed so you don't have to worry about weeding. That is a grub. Yuck, yuck, yuck. The only thing I hate planting in this garden is that I have landscape fabric. Don't ever, ever put landscape fabric. You'll be sorry, especially if you want to plant a lot. I don't think it does anything for you. It doesn't help the soil break down. These things have been in there for a good three years. They're not supposed to last this long and they have. I don't think that would ever break down, honestly. And if I dug with this, with my auger, then it's just gonna get twisted around the auger. This right here is my Easy Dig kit that came from Power Planter. It comes with two different augers and this awesome DeWalt drill. I love this thing and I would not have been able to plant all these plants in my garden without an auger. So if you like to plant, I firmly suggest that you buy you one. One thing that I do like about an auger is that it firmly loosens up your soil. So if you dig with a shovel, you're not going to have this loose soil and it's very easy to backfill. So that's one of the things that I like about that as well. Plus it saves me time. And the link to this power planter is in the description below. This container is probably a two gallon container, so I'm probably gonna have to dig a little bit deeper. But what I like to do is start my hole and then pull the plant out. Let's be careful. 
careful, don't pull it by the main trunk. And then some of the dirt that I'm going to backfill, I'll go ahead and put in this container right here. And I like to augment my soil just a little bit, but you never want to totally remove all this clay soil because you're going to have a water bath on your hands and it's a disaster. So at least two good handfuls of soil. I usually use land and sea, but I ran out, so that's what I had left. And I always use the Espoma Biotone because this helps the roots develop. And I do feel like that this makes a great big difference in my garden. And then I mend it with the auger. what your soil ends up like looking like there. All right, so then I'm going to place my plant. I need to get all these little things off at first. got some like little clover or something all over it. So you want your plant to be about one and a half inch to two inches above the ground. This one's just a little bit. Still need to go a little deeper here. Here's my ground level right there. So I want it about an inch above the ground level. That way it will drain away and not drain into my, ho my hole and create a water bath. And then that will just create root rot and we don't want that. And then I'm just gonna backfill here. I feel like when I use the auger, I don't have to waste clay and I don't have to take the clay away. So that's another thing that I like also. And then I tamp it down with my foot to get all the air pockets out. If I have enough compost left, I like to top dress it. That way this provides nutrients as well. And I'm probably not gonna fertilize this plant right now because things are about ready to go to sleep. So in the early spring, I'll give everything in my garden some type of organic fertilizer, whether it's rose tone, holly tone, plant tone. Those are the three that I usually use the most. And then I'm just gonna cover this back up with mulch.
always give your plants a good watering after you just originally planted them. So it's fall here, it's October, first part of October. So I'm not gonna really, I have my drip off right now, so I'm not really sure if I'm gonna turn my drip back on since I'm only in the 70s. But if we get another hot spell, I may turn the drip back on again. But just make sure you give it a good soaking originally. This one's pretty new too. This one right here is the puffer fish hydrangea. So there we go. There's my little sugar tip rose of Sharon. So this is the back side of my cottage garden and I already have at least three rows of Sharon's and they're all a different type. This one is the lilac and the blooms just aren't gorgeous but you can see there's a bee in there right now either asleep or enjoying itself. Yeah, it's moving. My neighbor up the street told me that there was these, all these little bugs that were all over her rows of Sharon. So I'm like, well, let me go look because I'm usually not on this back part of the garden where I normally can see really well. But sure enough, I've never seen whatever this is. Can you guys tell me what that is? I'm coming in focus there. And they're all over, not so much with this one, but my other type of Rosa Sharon, they're all over the buds and they're just eating this bloom before it's even came out. But it almost looks like a beetle. It almost looks like a beetle. It is speckled. It's got an orange head. It's brown and black. So anyways, I really don't know how to treat this, but I'm gonna use the Captain Jack dead bug to see if I can get rid of these. I almost thought that this was a certain type of aphid at first, but we just had hurricane strength winds with a lot of rain and it did not even knock these things off. So let me show you what the dead bug jack looks like. So this is what I'm going to use, Captain Jack's dead bug. And this is, you can use this for lots of things. And I did find where it is for certain type of beetles. But like I said, I'm just going to have to keep an eye on it and see if this will do any kind of harmful things to it. I hate to say that, but my plant's more important. So, let me see. So I have some in just a regular spray bottle right here. Let's see how these things react. And I'm going to have to just drench. I'm not sure really they're reacting to it. I'm gonna have to drench this plant. Well, let me show you my other rows of Sharon where it just completely destroyed all of the buds that are about ready to come out. Can you see those on that one and up here? So I don't think I'm gonna get any blooms 
out of these at all right now because they're just all over these buds, like millions of them. Trying to come in focus there. They're just all over the place, like what the heck? Right? Like I said, I'm just going to have to monitor, spray really hard. And monitor this plant. Now, it's not going to kill this plant, but my yard is about blooms, so I want blooms. So yeah, it really has gotten a hold of this one. Look at this plant when I step back. And there's another one. This one, I believe, was a lilac. That one was a magenta, which it doesn't have any blooms on it, but you can see. And this one is my blue chiffon. And it hasn't attacked this one as much. You can see that one has already budded out there. It still has. They're all over this one, too. So, okay, so I might as well just spray that one that I just planted as well. And this is my first ever seeing this insect, so now that I know, I'm going to have to monitor it, right? Like. So this time next year, I'm gonna know that I need to come out and like just look at the plant and maybe preventively spray for these as well. I'd rather do that. I'll, I'd like to pre preventive spray than to see them destroy my plants. Okay, so I'm gonna to continue to spray, but I wanna walk up here and show you the back of this cottage garden. So this is a Miss Molly that I need to prune back. This one's struggling a bit. I think something got down into the roots maybe. But anyways, like I think this, this whole limb right here is just dead because it's crispy. But this one's still alive and it still has some little leaves on it too. So that means it's alive. And I don't know if you ever guys have done the scratch test to see if things are living, but I'm gonna show you for the, this one. So you just take your fingernail and you scratch the surface there and you see that there's no green on that right there. You can also take pruners to scratch it too, but there's just no green. And let me come over to where I know that there, it's live and just scratch this right there. You see how there's green in that? So this plant is still alive. So if you still see that green, don't pull it up. Give it another season to see if it will bounce back, especially over winter. And then I have some junipers. Really wasn't for sure if I was gonna plant on this side until I ran out of real estate and I was like, oh, I, I have to plant this because, you know, my neighbors here probably really enjoy this. But this is the Rose of Sharon sugar tip that I just planted. There's the variegated leaves. That's what that bloom is going to look like. It has a little bit of black spot on it, so you can treat that with the fungicide, the copper fungicide. And I have all these products in my description below if you guys want to 
have a link for that. And there's the, sh the sugar, the puffer fish hydrangea that I just planted. And then right there is the lilac. So I'm not going to give a full tour because in the next day or two, I'm going to give a tour of the whole entire garden. Okay, and while we are on the subject of insects, I guess, do you guys know what this is right here? I'm highly allergic of fire ants and oh my gosh, look. I just moved this one piece of mulch and you can see these fire ants all over. But if I disturb that mound just a little bit, you can see them. These tiny little things, if I have one or just two bites on me, my ankles will swell up like crazy. So beware of fire ants. And I really try really hard to treat them whenever I see that. Test, test, test. Whenever we have a lot of rain, these fire ants seem to surface. No matter how preventative that I try, they still tend to come back. But anyways, this is what I'm gonna use today, kills fire ants, kills the queen, prevents these mounds, which that's a mound. Let's see if I can do this with one hand. You guys get to shake with it. <laughs> To treat the surrounding area too because it's all in the mulch. And it's pretty scary whenever you step in this and you don't know that it's there and then you're like feeling stuff just bite you on your ankles. It's awful. But as you can see, there we go. I might be overdoing it there. Who knows? So I had a patch there, and this is my cherry tree. And this one's not doing as well as my other cherry tree over there. But you know, I got squirrels and birds and whatever all over this one because of my bird feeder there. But there's another pile of fire ants there too, right here. But I hope that takes care of that. For the yard, I like to use a product called Duicide, and I'll throw that up on the screen too. And that's supposed to help grubs, uh, army worms, which right now you're supposed to treat army worms and grubs. So I don't think I have any grubs in my yard, but I've seen a lot of grubs in my mulch. So I'm gonna have to get me another bag of that Duicide and just use it for my flower beds. So I got that right there. Look, they just, I don't know why they like trees. I don't know. I think that mount, no, I don't know if there's something in that one or not. I'm not really seeing anything in that one. So that must have been, I just see a few. Spray some on there just to make sure. And that is Oakland Holly. Love this tree. 
I've got three. This one's Oakland Holly. And looky, looky. There's another mound. You can see there's just millions and millions of them. Uh, oh, there's some of the grass here too. Just have to be careful. Zinnias are doing gorgeous. I'm sorry guys, I get totally unfocused. I'm so bad about that. Look at that lovely bee on that zinnia. There's a couple of bees. How gorgeous all of this is. Love this red. I need to come out here and make me a bouquet. Maybe I'll do that and share it with you guys. And this is Celosia. I'm looking for more fire ants. I really don't see any more. And I have to share with you one more thing before we go. Let me share some of my roses. Gabrielle Oak. And there's one over here that I have to show you because it is gorgeous. Let me put this bag down. So I can come share with you. This one is Boscobel. And this time of year they just have the most gorgeous color because we're getting cooler at nighttime. Oh, you guys, there's nothing more beautiful than that. And then there's another one over here. Love that color. I wish we were always cooler. I know that these roses would be a little bit happier. So let me show you what the deer did. I, I was filming this fall container when I realized that all the deer had eaten my flowers off these roses. And I thought I found a hack, but honestly, I think if deer are hungry enough, there's just nothing that will keep them off. But yeah, they ate all the buds off completely. I'm not really seeing much blooms on this Alexandra of Kent. I have some new foliage coming out where that's gonna be some blooms, but only if the deer will absolutely leave it alone. And let's swing back onto this other side. I'm gonna do a full garden tour, so be patient with me. But as you can see, look, can you tell where they just ate the tops right off? That's my, my pruning. I always prune down to a leaf of five. There is no five leaves there whatsoever. But I'm on the struggle bus with these deer. Let me know in comments if you have any advice. I've tried lots of different things. Last night I put that liquid deer and deer fence on it just to see if that'll keep it away. But you have to keep reapplying it.
So I'm sitting here in the English garden enjoying these lovely Boscobel roses behind me. I hope you enjoyed the description of the Rose of Sharon sugar tip and the one-on-one -on -one planting of that plant. If you had not subscribed to my channel, it means a lot to me. I have a goal of a thousand subscribers, so be one of the first 1,000 to subscribe. And I'm gonna have a full garden tour here in October and enjoying all the fall plants for you. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye friends.